I usually leave it. Oh, there we are. Good Hello. morning. How are you? Welcome. Thank you so much for joining me, Spoon. It's my pleasure. Absolutely so, so happy to be available and uh, having a chat with you today. And can I call you Spoon? Yeah, of course. Because normally I call you Elroy. Yeah, that's my name. That is also your name. <laughs> all my, all my ma- you know, all my mates call me Spoon. I started off as a singer. The first song I ever put together or got involved in went to number one in the charts. And my, my sort of stage name, my artist name has always been Spoon or Spoon Face. So all my mates call me Spoon. I'm going to call you Spoon now. Do it. So actually we met briefly at the National Achievers Congress in November, I remember, in Birmingham. Yeah. Very briefly, I bumped into Jenny. Yeah, like and my partner. Jenny introduced me to you. Yeah, and she's always talking about you and your your yoga exploits and all sorts. And um, yeah, that I really enjoy uh, self development, going out to conferences, connecting with people that are cultivating an environment to um, support their growth and their transformation. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's something that's been very important to me. Uh, in my career and in my life generally. I I loved that event. Gary V was such a highlight for me. Dude turns up, nothing, no script, no nothing. Just says, yeah, ask me some questions. 100, 100 grand, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I love the realism. I, I really, I mean, a lot of us, a lot of people, a lot, a lot of the time, we're not saying anything new. Yes. If, any, if anything, it's just from our own personal experience and how that, information that knowledge has impacted our lives and then we yeah. just sort of share from that perspective and um and then for younger people or people that haven't necessarily been through those experiences it's nice to be able to share something that may be useful to them and absolutely irrespective of age you know absolutely so you grew up in tottenham i did yeah i grew up in, in the 80s. I grew up in t- tottenham in the 80s at a time when there was a lot of racism. Yeah, like you had, you know, National Front, a National Front, and then that went on to be like, um, and then you had like um, BMP and so on, and um, and generally, it was a very different landscape. You know, you had programs like Love Thy Neighbor and so on, yes. where you know people were just so much more um, racist without realizing. Absolutely, you know, it was just accepted. We- I, I remember we were in the anti-Nazi league here. Wow. In the countryside, but we were in the anti-Nazi league, yeah. The National Front were really frightening. Yeah. Different time. I mean, the generation before me, like my dad's generation and my grandparents, they had it even worse with Teddy Boys and other people, you know what I mean? Even mods at times being, you know, like that and having to defend themselves from physical violence and abuse and so on. Mm. And, and then in a lot of ways it kind of evolved um into the fabric of society you know yeah. you didn't necessarily get um dog feces for your letterbox or a brick it was it would emerge in different ways yes um, absolutely. but you know for me i mean especially as a, a young person you don't you just accept it as your environment and you crack on mm-hmm. and um what really helped me was eventually getting involved in martial arts at a young age mm-hmm where I saw these real strong alpha males often who are very kind and compassionate and um, inspirational, really encouraging, and taught us how to really connect with who we were and, and what, it, what, what it meant to be us and what we wanted from our lives. From and, yeah. and, and I didn't really understand. You're at that age where you just take it and you soak it up and you don't really know what to do with it. Yeah. And, um, and then later on I had this opportunity with Black Legend and I never had anyone to tell me how you handle having a number one record. I never did dance lessons. I had singing lessons with a lovely woman by the name of Lisa Millett, um, who was signed to Defective Records at the time and really talented and helped me. And she created the bridge with the opportunity, but I never knew how to deal with interviews and television and all this kind of stuff. But having, the martial arts background and the type of instructors I had, it was do it, give it your best shot, enjoy it, adapt, learn from it, don't shy away. And that became a lot of who I was <clears throat> or am, I should say. Yeah. 
Um, so that was really a big deal. Amazing, amazing. So, so uh, I didn't know anything about your background. So I read a little bit about you on your um, social media and I went onto YouTube and watched Black Legends and then I was like, oh, you're that guy. Yeah, so I was studying, I was at uni for a couple of years and honestly going through a hard time. At the time, my mum wasn't well mm -hmm. and I had a load of family stuff really impacting me and I couldn't focus. I was really actually flunking out of um, um, studying law at the time. And then a friend of mine, uh, Lisa Millet, said, listen, these guys need someone to re-vocal a Barry White track. And I had a deep voice back then. Uh, but to, to re-vocal Barry White isn't just about rocking up with a deep voice. The guy with <laughs> him was a resonating chamber and I wasn't as big as I am now back then. So when he sang, everything moved. And um, so it, it was a real challenge in the studio, but we did it. And I was just happy to make some money for the studio and everything and come back to the UK and crack on with trying to get back in the flow of my uni work. And then I got a, a message, oh, we have to, uh, we're licensing it to this record label in the UK, and then you're going to have to do Top of the Pops. And I was like, whoa, okay. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, okay, uh, yeah, I'll do that. Um, and that was it. That was my introduction to the to the record industry, straight wow. in with, with a number one, which at the time was different to now, where it comes and goes and you don't really hear much. It was millions, uh, what well, was it, it, we sold several million worldwide. And um, and it and it, it had a life before I got involved in the project because it was a white label. Um, but when I got involved, I had to be the face and front it and travel. So going from being a, a lad from Tottenham, um, I, I just I hadn't even travelled really anywhere. Suddenly, I was out three or four times a week performing, travelling to the Middle East and uh, the Balearics and all this kind of stuff yeah. regularly. And um, I learned so much. I learned not just about the industry, but also how to manage the pressures. So you get, and it took me a while, it took me a, a while because everything is happening so quickly. You don't really get to realize what's happening until yeah. a good five, 10 years later, seriously. And I started to really soak up all the lessons from it. And I wrote a book called How to Think Beyond the Chart Position on Amazon now. Um, that I'm going to buy that now. I am so going to buy that now. Amazing, thank you. Yeah. And I, I share my experiences there. Because one of the main things I learned was the importance of looking after yourself and finding mm -hmm. balance. You know, I, I it, before I used to think, yeah, get a number one record and with whatever you do, get, get to number one and that's it. But realizing now it's better to figure out a way to make it sustainable over time than killing yourself to do, no, make it sustainable in a mindful way so you're healthy and you can enjoy it. And you have an environment of people that you can connect with in a way that it feels right to, that you love and they love you and you enjoy what you're doing. It's always gonna be hard to do, to do whatever we're doing, but if we could find a way to, to, to navigate towards what we really want to do, I feel that you can enjoy the, the challenges a, a bit easier. Absolutely, absolutely. The long game. The long game. <laughs> And so, so for me, part of that, I, I talk about um, finding your purpose, figuring out your why, as, as a lot do, but, you know, uh, figuring out your big picture, your big idea for you. Um, so you have a purpose, you have direction, and being open to how that evolves over time, mm -hmm. checking in to assess how that's going to move. And then uh, also about belief in yourself. You know, mindset is so important, and being consistent, and loving yourself, and mm -hmm. having people around you that love us, but not uh, that, that are not yes people that yeah. are going to say with love, how about you try this to develop in this way? Or how, you know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, from there, building your network, your relationships and your skills, but not in a, in a taking kind of way, in a way where you're giving forward into those relationships also. So they remain healthy and buoyant and so on. And then avoiding burnout at all costs. Mm -hmm. It's horrible. Yeah. Um, you, you don't get to enjoy who you are and, and, and your achievements and, and so on. And it, it's painful having been there. And then community. I feel it's so important that we give 
and that we also recognize how giving into our communities create this element of sustainability. So we're, we're giving in and taking when we need to, but giving back or giving forward so others can, can grow with us. And so it becomes a sustainable um, hub of movement and growth and energy um, and we're not depleting it. So oh, yeah. that's what I learned. And that's what I talk about in my book, How to Think Beyond the Chart Position. So, um, so from your experience of burnout to um, getting to where you are today, uh, how has that journey looked? Well, I went through a point, as I say, where I was a young, I was a rooster, just like, yeah, bring it, let's do this. Number one record, private jets, traveling everywhere. But because I had a real kind of um, humble beginning to my life, you know, my parents mm -hmm. working class family from Jamaica, mm -hmm. we didn't have much. I wanted to figure out, okay, I'm not gonna go crazy. No, no cocaine and, and whores, excuse mm -hmm. my, my language at this time of the yeah. day, but not yeah. burning out the money on, on nonsense. How can I make mm -hmm. this work? But I didn't have the knowledge um, of what to do financially. I didn't have the access to people to give me advice about generating several streams of income and mm. you know how to deal with your taxes properly and, and all that kind of stuff in a way uh, that means you can make it sustainable. So um, I tried a few things, bought property and that kind of stuff and had to sell it um, to pay taxes and then mm. figure out, oh my gosh, what do I do from here? And what that meant for me was going back to ground zero looking at the skills, identifying the skills that I had and figuring out how to monetize them. So I then moved into acting a lot more. I've always been into performing arts. I did a lot of presenting for uh, people like Virgin, um, what used to be Trouble TV back in the day and so on, and Dave and that. And I thought, okay, let me just get into acting. Let me get into that properly. Did did a few courses. Um, ended up I ended up at, on EastEnders as a market trader for a while. And then slowly that evolved into me doing a ton of commercials like Haribo, um, Specsavers, you know, got a, got a proper agent and then started doing, I did things like um, fighting with my family, which is on Netflix now, um, showed up in Star Wars um, as Ross Aweno, this uh, intergalactic gangster. Really? Like having fun um, in Maz Katana's castle. You see me milling about. Um, so, yeah, I just thought, what are my skills? And then I then got into voiceover. So I started as a singer and I love to sing, but I honestly don't like the business. And I'll, yeah. I'll be honest with you, it's because people just expect you to do so much for nothing. Yeah. Oh yeah, I've got this song. Can you please just do a vocal? And yeah. if it does well, then we can all make some money. Yeah. Well, if you go to Tesco right now for food, you ain't leaving that building until you pay for it. But if you would like me <laughs> to assist then you know we're gonna have to exchange some and it was a challenge too much of a fight so I thought let's see what I can do so I still do that I got more into publishing and um the the sort of licensing and rights management side of things I still sing and and then I thought let me be more of a voice actor and then start to do things like switch guarantee I'm the voice of switch guarantee at the moment video games um other commercials and I work with a friend of mine that remakes voices for songs um which I love it's fun you get to just mess around um it, don't get me wrong you need to be focused and be able to deliver what a client needs create a solution for them but I have fun doing it I have That's so nice. much fun I'm a bit of a geek as well so I I'm very meticulous with frequency and figuring out timings and recognizing patterns and so I love editing and, and that kind of thing. I really enjoy it. So went off into voiceover land and now that's why I'm Spoon the Voice Guy. And as well as putting stuff out um, in that sense, I'm also running courses. And as a actually as a special for your network and people that are watching this, until Monday, I'm open just for this time to make a course available, the voiceover home setup course for 67 pounds and it's usually 495 quid but I'm doing it as a, a special just because of what's happening here I know what's going on with the current situation people find it very challenging working from home figuring out yeah. new ways new avenues yeah. to generate revenue and um, there are a lot of skills you can get from this course that are not just about being a voice actor but also about running your own business from home because when this whole thing hit mm -hmm. I wasn't just um 
sitting around. I have things shut down. I, I had a few f- uh, film projects that I was on that they've had to put on pause until we get out of quarantine. But um, I've been working from home for years, vocals, recording, and, and doing stuff. But I would often go into town to do a lot of the commercials. So now I'm just doing a lot of it from, from where I am. Right. It hasn't really been that much of an issue, thank goodness. Um, but beyond that, it's because I also do other things like e-commerce, drop shipping. Um, I run a few YouTube channels. I do a, lot, a few different things that help generate revenue so that I don't have to rely on the one thing. And that's another yeah. thing that I ensure that I, another element I sure I share with the people that are part of the course. So if that's useful, I'll, I'll post a link, I'll share a link and, and people can get into that. But that's going back fantastic. to what we said, yeah. So this is part of my journey coming from um, number one record, you know, burning out and then figuring out, okay, what are my skills? Ground zero, what can I do? How, how can I create the right environment around me? I let go of a ton of friends and a, a ton of things that I used to do. And I started to rebuild and get back into things I love to do. Gracie Jiu-Jitsu through um, EKBJJ, Eddie Cohn uh, Jiu-Jitsu to develop my just my internal health and strength and all that kind of stuff again. Nutrition, I became mm-hmm. a vegan. I've been vegan for almost four years now. Um, just plant-based and feel so energized and alive and you know, just being so much more open to some of the things that I used to shy away from because of fear. You know, yeah. I thought fear is a massive thing. And the thing, here's the thing, what we what we think we feel and what we feel has an impact on our emotions, on our, on our actions. Um, so fear isn't a bad thing. It's just the way we respond to it, right? Mm-hmm. So if you're stopping, if if you're stopping yourself from taking on an opportunity, from getting into the right relationship, and all that kind of stuff, then you're going to really limit your growth and the potential for enjoying your life, the quality of life that we have, right? So I just started to become more open to certain things, embrace the fear and just do it and then be sensible and just learn from it. Okay, that was dangerous. Let me pull that in a bit and so on. But I just embrace the fear in so many ways and stop worrying about what people think, you know? And we do that a lot. We beat ourselves up a lot, don't we? Um, yeah, that's why this practice of savers, which we'll probably talk about in a moment, yeah, I find it really helpful. Yeah, um, I've one of the things I've really noticed during this time of lockdown is uh, how hard I am on myself and how I'm quite often not happy with my anything that I do. I'm not happy. It's not good enough. Everything, like really hard on myself. And and when you asked on your Facebook about how did everyone get on with savers this morning? I said, I failed. And you were like, okay, let's just bring that back a bit and think about that language. 100%. Um, in, inside, internally, that little voice often is constantly chipping away. Don't do mm. it. No, you're rubbish. Mm. You're, you're too old. You're too fat. You're too whatever. You know what I mean? Mm. And so what I try to do is fill that space fill it, reverse it, fill it with, with as much positive voicing so there's no space for any negative yes. uh, And then get myself into a state where I act upon the the, the energy of that positive um, vibe. So so save us for people that are watching that don't have a clue what, <laughs> about what we're talking about. My partner, Jenny, introduced me to this practice um, from a book called The Miracle Morning by Hal Elrod. And... Um, it's basically silence, affirmations, visualization, exercise, reading, and scribing. 10 minutes on each section daily before you do anything. And I did it once. When, she, when Jenny told me, I said, yeah, okay, let's do it because I'm open. Yeah, let's do it. And I did it and I went, oh my God, is this real? You know what I mean? Like, I feel so focused, aligned, and ready to, and ask her, I, I just started, I started, my productivity levels went through the roof. And essentially what I find is the time to be silent really allows us to become aware of ourselves, aware of where we're holding tension, where we're stressed, where we have the ability to, to be productive. Um, to be present with with ourselves, to hear what is happening within us. And when we can give ourselves permission and give ourselves the freedom 
to engage in this way. It's beautiful. Um, and not worry about your, your mind going crazy as you're being silent. And it's fine. It's like anything. If you're, you're, you're doing yoga, I'm not a yogi. But if you're stretching from a martial arts perspective, when you're stretching, if you if I were just to sit you down and ram your legs open, mm. the experience is going to be painful. You're mm. never going to want to do it again. Mm. When you just sit there and allow mm. yourself to just naturally fall into it, yeah, I find the, the the noise and everything just eventually dissolves away. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And that's something I've been talking to my kids about because my kids are getting into meditation and they're like oh, but I can't shut my head up. And I'm like, yeah, that's okay. Like the head never shuts up. It's just about being with the head. Like I saw the Dalai Lama speaking at um, Glastonbury a few years ago, which I felt really fortunate to do. And, and he said, um, he said, I meditate every morning for five hours for world peace. That's my job. And at some point during that five hours, I experience a moment of stillness. And mm. when I heard him say that, I was like, yeah, it's okay. Like, he's the Dalai Lama, and he has a moment in five hours. It's okay that my head doesn't stop. This is natural. I love that. Mm. And so from the silence, we go into affirmations. And this is another thing that is often challenging, uh, because some people, sometimes we don't give ourselves the, the chance to speak positively. Uh, we feel almost bad about it because we feel, yeah. oh no, I can't. So when I figure, when you figure out what you want to say, you know, I exist in my highest power and go stronger every day. I'm unstoppable. I'm, you know, whatever it is you find you want to say, you just feel this sense of engagement and positivity. And then you roll into visualizing it and thinking about your ultimate transformation and where you want to be. And then once you hit that exercise phase and you feel pumped, physically you connect the internal and the external and you're ready for action and you're receptive and you're ready to 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 do yeah. and then you read you, you you're growing you're learning so when you come to the scribing section where you either talk about your feelings i divide the scribing into two i talk about my feelings how do i feel in this moment super present how am i feeling what is happening who do i love who do i not want to be around who do I yeah. write it all down and then the next section, goals, like big ones and then small ones that help me inch towards the big ones. Choose three things out of five that I want to do that day. And don't beat myself up if I only do one, because then it means I'm a I'm one thing closer to where I want to be. Absolutely. And chip away every day. And there's another really cool book by a guy called um, James Clear, Atomic Habits, that was introduced to me by Eddie Cohen, actually, my professor at... Uh, EKBJJ, which really helps you become conscious about the habits we create. Because it's those habits that really help us with routine and edging towards where we want to be. And yeah. in there, he talks about this guy who wanted to start running five or 10Ks. And all he would do for weeks was um, pull out his trainers. Yeah. <laughs> Just pull out his trainers. And then eventually put the trainers on. Didn't go anywhere. And then eventually he put them on and stepped outside and stepped back in again. Until then he started going around the block and then built up the... And so it's just the little tiptoe, the little inches yeah. towards the goals and stop beating ourselves up. That's all. That's yeah. been the thing, um, especially during this period where we're, we're, we're so penned in, we're yeah. in front of the mirror. We're yeah. facing ourselves all the time. Yes, absolutely. It's, it is at times really challenging. And I did save us this morning. I did it before I taught yoga. I did two minutes of each thing and um, I felt a hundred times better than I felt when I woke up this morning. Amazing. Then, then I taught yoga, then I went into a slump <laughs> and now I'm here again. It's like, that's what it's like in lockdown, isn't it? Yeah, and that's what it's like in life. Right, it's not, it's, so many feelings, and it is, yeah, it is what it's like in life. It's just, it's magnified now. Yeah, because I, I feel when we're allowed out, we have an opportunity to put things in a way to escape it. Yes, right? and Absolutely. there's no, <laughs> there's no escaping. Yeah, company activities. Yeah, I've got to go and do this for the kids. I've got. To, yeah, I've got to go. Work. I'm working overtime. I'm doing extra hours at work tonight. I've got some meet. I've got some networking thing. Well, no, you can't do that now. You've got to look at yourself. 
Yeah. You gotta look at yourself. Who are you? What's going on? Why are you doing what you do? Why what what's the what's the end game? Yeah, and it's not always pretty. No. It's not always pretty and and it and it doesn't go away until it's accepted. Yeah. Yeah. Love that. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's been a lot of what I've been about. I started a group called Ready for Dreams, as you know. Oh, um, I love this. Yeah. This brilliant. Ready for Dreams is brilliant. Thank you so much. So Ready for Dreams came about because let me roll back probably about 10 years now or, or more. I had a really challenging experience with sleep apnea. Mm -hmm. One night I was sleeping and I just stopped breathing. Oh, and wow. I woke up, I looked around, but I couldn't speak because I had no breath and it scared the life out of me. But because of my martial arts experience, I, I didn't go crazy. I didn't shout, I didn't scream internally. I kind of just said, focus on your breath, focus on your breath. And so I got a small flow. And as soon as I could breathe, breathe properly, managed to get myself to hospital. Mm -hmm. And um, when I got there, I was on this ward. I was talking about this recently. I was on a ward with, the, the hospital was packed with old people who were, like had Alzheimer's and all sorts. And um, it made me think, I really don't need to be here. I'm too young for this. And so I came out and I started to exercise again. I started to focus on me a bit more because I basically started to put too much time into everyone else and, and totally yeah. forgot myself, my family, my work and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So um, essentially Ready for Dreams came about because I recognized the power of sleep and how we regenerate and how we need it to hit that reset button and come out full of energy to do what we want to do. So I'll create some stories, got some lovely writers together and the uh, voices on my roster at Spoons Voices, I run a voiceover agency got them to read a few stories. And I thought, okay, let's just make it available. Yeah. So I made it available, it's on Amazon and it, there's a private portal where you can access the stories. But the power came from the group. So we started a Facebook group and then people are sharing tips on stress and anxiety and the how to overcome the challenges they've been through in their situations. And we have professionals like therapists and sleep doctors and others sharing their insights. We've had Richard Blackwood come and talk about his life and how he um, managed to bounce forward from bankruptcy to the amazing career that he's enjoying right now. And so all of this wealth of positive energy has been so inspirational to everybody involved in the group. And I'm charged. Every time I wake up and I see notifications and I, I just keep getting ideas about what to keep feeding in and, and taking on the ideas from everyone involved to just make it bigger and better and, and as supportive and high quality as possible. Brilliant. And I love the way that you um, sometimes actually read a bedtime story for adults on there. Yes, it's, it's been a thing of mine. I, there are, I have so many friends in, a, in the music industry and I could have put together some songs and that kind of stuff. And I thought, actually, I just want to tell some stories yeah. because of yeah the, the way we it connects us, it, the way it inspires us in a very simple way mm -hmm. and uh, takes us often back to a time where we were looked after if you had that in your life as a as a young person you know our parents reading to us or just being there or sharing yeah. and if you didn't have that now you have in a in a warm safe environment an adult giving you that time and you're allowing absolutely. yourself the permission to enjoy it yeah phenomenal absolutely so, yeah and so what i'm doing we, i have the live stories that i do but I also have some recorded versions that I will post a link to. So if anyone wants to have them, they're totally free. And subscribe to the um, the YouTube channel where you can access free meditation music and interviews like this and, and so on to enjoy in your own time because I just feel it's just so needed and useful and a great way to connect again, going back to building community. Yeah. It's never too late to have a happy childhood. Oh, I love that. Yeah. 100. <laughs> 100. That inner child still needs some uh, attention. Yeah. So uh, what's been your favourite thing about lockdown? My favourite thing about lockdown has been the opportunity to get super productive. 
-hmm. You know, I have been able to, oh goodness, do so much from um, my own personal work and creativity through to helping people through my courses, through to running the group Ready for Dreams and interacting and encouraging and supporting people there. I've grown deeply connected even more so to my partner yeah and you know I'm self you know isolating with my mum also and it's been, I've had an opportunity to just reconnect with her in a different way and just be supportive and around and be able to help and that's been beautiful and um I love that I love that I've been able to do that yeah yeah, I've really enjoyed yours and Jenny's lives uh, together in the garden. They've been a real highlight for me. <laughs> you know what? Me and Jen have so much fun. We're just like buddies. We're just like best mates. Yeah, we love just, like, We mess around. We just like get so goofy and I love that. Love that, yeah. So... so, so um, what would you say has been the highlight of your career? Oh, that question is so challenging. I've had a few. The first one was the number one record with Black Legend. Yeah. Because it did so much for me beyond um, exposure and finances and so on. I learned so much about myself. You know, when you, I went from, again, being just a, a regular kid to that opportunity which meant I could I, I could see that if you are positive, if you do grind and, and push and you can create, you can do anything. I remember at times my dad was a bit of a negative kind of guy at times and he, he didn't believe it was possible, you know. And I, I recognise now as an adult, a lot of that was fear mm. of potentially me not doing well and him potentially thinking, no, have some other things that you're doing, you know, and obviously his own personal issues as well. But doing, have being involved in that taught me that we can achieve anything if we put our minds to it. And people like lately say, no, you can't do anything because, you know, well, that's your opinion and it's okay. It's okay <laughs> for that opinion. From my personal experience, I've been able to achieve some things in my life that I never thought I would until I decided I was going to believe that I could. You know what I mean? Yes, yes. So so then uh, there, that was that. And then there was Star Wars. Well, oh my goodness. Yeah, me. I did want to stop you when you threw Star Wars in earlier. So this happened because I was doing a lot of supporting in order to develop my skills in that. I, I, I didn't go the traditional acting route. So I started out doing um, supporting artist work and so on. and. Um, over time, I found an agency and we were talking and they were very kind of hush-hush about a project. They just kept coming backwards and forth, going backwards and forwards about availability. I'm like, yeah, because yeah. I missed it. Yeah, I'm available. Let's do it. And so I end up turning up at this place and um, I still have no idea after months of being told about it, what it is I'm actually doing. And we're walking down this <laughs> corridor and then I suddenly see like um, stormtrooper arms and diagrams <laughs> of... CP3O and all this kind of stuff. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> like, no way. This, nah. And then we get there and they're like, yes, you're going to be one of 20 people who, who are in this particular scene and um, we'd like you to wear this. And they measured me up and put this stuff on me. And I was like, wow. Because it wasn't just the fact that I was um, on this massive franchise. It was, I grew up with it. Yes. You know, a lot of us did. It was phenomenal, you know, the story and the the magic of Star Wars. Um, and to be a part of that and then to turn up as a character and get involved in that sense was phenomenal. Yeah. So that was a, an incredible highlight. Again, um, just being positive and consistent and out there and trying and just not letting anything hold me down. And if any pain and bad experiences anchor me in any negative energy, just like, all right, whatever, what do we learn from that? Let's keep going, building a network in a positive way. Bang, Star Wars. Um, that was phenomenal. And then now, um, I can't say too much about it, but I have some other film stuff happening, but in the gaps between that and Star Wars came about fighting with my family. 
um, yeah. working with The Rock and Stephen Merchant. Um, but I loved, I love Stephen Merchant because he's like on set. He's he's so he knows how to get the best out of people and and keep things buoyant and fun. And you see him go from very serious and focused as a director to then putting on his performance hat and knowing exactly what he's doing. And, and it's just so, it's brilliant to watch. And then the other actors like uh, Nick Frost, one of the loveliest guys in the world, really warm, really fun, really good at what he does. And um, behind the scenes, the car, the, the, the crew, you know, uh, the, the director of photography, the production guy, like people on that set, on that whole production were just phenomenal in my opinion. And I know some, we all say that when you get on a project and you're there for ages, oh yeah, everyone's great. Nah. Yeah. But... Everyone was, I got with everyone and every, every, everyone was phenomenal. I loved it. So that was also another highlight in my life. And there are more to come. There are more to come. And whatever happens, I, I just really appreciate it. I feel everything now is just cherry on the cake. Again, mm -hmm. because I, I started from such humble beginnings. You know what I mean? There was yeah. a time when I couldn't afford the latest you know, trainers and not that that matters. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's all material stuff. It don't matter. But when you're a kid and when you're a lot younger, all these things that you think matter and you can't afford and you can't have, you really want. And to then get to a place where I can do those things and not think too much about it. Yeah. Um, and and also to get to a place where I recognize it doesn't matter. Yeah. I can, I can prioritize what really matters, those relationships yeah. with the people that matter. The, the yeah. love that we're able to give and receive, you can't put a price on that. There are a lot of people out there in pain, feeling very lonely, mm. that are not loved and mm. don't feel loved. Maybe they are, but they don't recognize it, mm. you know? And so being able to recognize the love that is out there for me, the love that I have for myself first and foremost, because mm -hmm. we're the first ones, right? We're the first responders for anything. So I feel like we have to love ourselves as much as we can, all our faults and everything. And if we want to move in whatever direction, figure out how we inch there and love the process. And it's going to be challenging at times. I'm not saying it's easy at all. You know, I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying, just love yourself. Love yourself. It's going to be okay. Take your time. Things are going to happen. Just acceptance, as you're saying. Things are going to happen. And things are going to happen in a way that we might not want to happen. It just is. What else can I be grateful for? Yeah, what else can I be grateful for? And I love that term, we're the first responders. I haven't heard that term before. I've seen a lot of people doing um, survival first aid kits during lockdown. And I think, oh, I'm the first responder. Yeah, that's that's a really good term. Thank you. Yeah. Um, for friends, I have friends who are in armed forces and soldiers and all that kind of stuff. And, and um, that's something they use often. Um, mm -hmm. You know, but in terms emotionally, it's us. Yes, right? <laughs> it's us. Yeah. We can't wait. And of course, if you need professional help, you know, get a therapist. Go and see people, and that's so important. And it's okay. Yeah. Don't judge yourself. It's okay to do that. Yeah. So yeah. that that time between now and then, do the best you can to love yourself. Lovely. Lovely. So we'll put some book recommendations in the comments from you. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, and your book. Fantastic. I'll do that. Absolutely do that. And like I say, I'll, I'll, I'm running this course to help people who are figuring out, pivoting to new careers and specifically voiceover, working from home. I can offer a special deal until, until Monday. And this then, is such a good idea because so many people don't know if their job's going to be there. So many people will be reassessing, like, now that I've had some time off work, is the work, is this the work I want to be in? So many people who are working will also be reassessing, is this the work I want to be in? And to just start exploring that, what else is available? What else could I do? How could I do it? Really valuable time to do that, I think. 100%. Absolutely yeah. agree. So um, I guess uh, I'll, I'll leave you to have a wonderful rest of the day. Yeah, really great talking to you. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your time. Yeah. You're welcome. Brilliant. And we'll put links in the comments. 
fantastic. I'll make sure I'll, I'll answer any questions. Anyone wants to ask me anything, I'll jump on the comments um, and we'll, we'll crack on. It's all good. Thank you very much, Spoon. Have a lovely day. Thank you. Bye.